Hey guys, so one year ago I started using this telescope as uh, our main telescope for home, so backyard imaging, and uh, it's been already a year, so I wanted to make a, a quick review, uh, just you and I right here, and uh, tell you why I enjoyed this telescope, and I think it's a great scope for both beginner and advanced. Uh, number one, it's the size and the weight. Uh, as you can see, the size is not too big, so it's a good uh, portable scope. You can extend the shield here, which is, I think is going to go out of frame, but we'll see. Just like this. And uh, there is a handle here, which I think is crucial for portable scopes. It makes carrying it around much easier, and I think every scope should have a, a handle like this. There's also a, a slit uh, in there, so you can attach whatever you want, an eagle, whatever you want on top. Um, so it's really not just a handle, it's also a, a way to attach something there. Uh, if you don't care about the handle. The weight is not really heavy, so it's once again very portable. Uh, I use it on my AM3, but you can do so as well on the AM5. I've used it on, on several mounts and each time is fine. So as you can see here, AM3, which is the smallest one of the CW mounts, with no counterweight, and it's just fine. Guiding at 0 0.4, so uh, really good. Uh, also, here you can attach um, something like this I air, like in most telescopes. Uh, here I have my EAF as well attached on the side, and we have a OSC camera here. It is the Ascar FRA 500, uh, so 500 is the focal length. It is a quintuplet telescope, and it is 5.6 as the focal ratio. So it's fast enough. I don't like going uh, above 5 usually for imaging. I think it becomes a bit slow above 5. 5.6 um, is okay. But the good thing is that we can attach something to make it much, much faster, which is why I uh, was interested in this telescope in the first place. But we'll see that in just a second. So you can easily attach a filter in there. I'll just show you right now as I unplug my, my camera here. Um, and you will see not only the filter, but also what I was uh, talking about to turn this F5.6 into something much faster. This is where the filter goes, if you have one. So I always used my dual band filter in there. And here you see you have two parts. So I'm going to remove the filter holder. And so just so you understand what I mean. So this is a filter holder. So here you can uh, thread in a filter, which I have done here, and easily uh, unthread it like this. So here currently I have the Ascar uh, dual band filter, six nanometer. So it's up to you if you want to use one. And what I meant when I said uh, turn this into a faster telescope is if you purchase the Ascar uh, reducer, it turns the telescope from f5.6 to f3.9, which is very, very fast uh, in comparison. So f3.9 is much faster than f5.6. So you would have to spend much less time on each target to get similar results. Um, one thing to know, though, is that by doing that, by adding this reducer, uh, it's also going to uh, make your field of view wider. So for some people, it's a good thing. For some, it's not. In my case, I was looking for a wide telescope, so I did decide to get the 500 because I already had in mind to use the reducer, so I knew it would turn into 350 in focal length. But if you want something with a longer focal length, they have the 600 and the reducer is also available for that. So uh, 600 is a bit bigger, a bit longer. And then they also have uh, 400 and 300. So that's, you can pick whatever you want. I, I think the reducer is available for 400, 500, and 600. I'm not sure about 300. So if you do get this uh, reducer, you can, whenever you want, you can just switch it out uh, if you want to go from 350 to 500 in focal length, uh, and also uh, 3.9 to 5.6 in focal ratio. I personally only used um, the fast ratio because I, I love fast telescopes. So I always, always use this. So I think it's a really good uh, thing to have. And you can see a few pictures here of this, what it looks like at this focal length. And usually I would spend one or two nights uh, max in the backyard with um, this reducer, so F3.9, and it was more than enough in bore online. So that's good. So also the telescope is a flat field. So if you don't um, use the reducer, uh, it doesn't matter if your back focus is bad, as long as you can focus to achieve uh, focus, 
you will not have to care about um, any back focus issues. So in some telescope, you have to always calculate the back focus and usually a 55 millimeter. Uh, but in this one, just take the camera in there, uh, find the star, and if it's, if it's there, it's fine. You won't have any uh, elongated stars on the edges. Uh, it's a Petzval design, uh, which is why uh, the field of view will be flat no matter what. So that's, that's what I love in telescopes. I love Petzvals. You don't have to scratch your head about any back focus issues, except if you use the reducer. So if you use the reducer, it's going to cancel out any uh, Petzval uh, design and you will have to be careful about the back focus. So because I used this telescope uh, at its fastest, so f3.9, I had to make sure the first time I used the camera that the back focus was uh, on point or else I would have elongated stars on the edges. Now, one more thing I want to cover that's very important as well is that this telescope is supposed to show a flat field even with a full frame camera. So this, I had issues at first. I had uh, not only some elongated stars on my edges, but mostly tilt. And I was convinced it was the telescope because on my previous scope, which was very similar, I did not have any issues. And so I was wondering if it was really true that you could use a full frame camera on this telescope or if it was um, maybe exaggerated. And after doing many, many tests and using different cameras and even using um, the same reducer on a friend's telescope and doing more tests, uh, thanks Patrick, uh, we realized that the main issue, so the tilt, was coming from my camera sensor. So if you have issues with any telescope, not just this one, but any telescope, make sure you don't blame the scope. Make sure you look at the camera sensor first which might be the source of the issue. But yeah, anyway, I really wanted to make this video because today, well, this week is, I think, the one year mark since we started using this telescope. And it's been a blast so far with many beautiful pictures. And uh, yeah, that was a, that is a great telescope. There is one different telescope we're going to be using for the next few weeks for a review. Uh, so we'll have to do a, a pause on this one but we'll, we'll keep using this one as a main home telescope for sure. And so yeah, I'll uh, see you guys next time and um, please expect more uh, beautiful pictures taken with this telescope. Just guys. <laughs>